Hey guys, this is Ryan. And this is Caden. And we want to welcome you back to another episode of the First College Podcast, where we seek to answer questions that college students ask. We hope that this encourages you in your walk with Christ. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the First College Podcast. Let's go. Um, we are so excited to uh, be with you guys again today. And just really excited about uh, today's question. This is a a big question. Yep. Um, certainly one that um, we hope that we'll be able to answer well for you today. Um, and it really kind of relates back to a question we had a few weeks ago. And mm-hmm. so this question today, the one that was submitted, is can you be unsaved? Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to kind of rephrase that question to what I think the person who submitted this is asking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the question we're going to tackle here today is, can a Christian lose their salvation? Mm-hmm. Uh, loaded question. It's a good big question. question. Yeah, big question. Phenomenal question. Uh, can a Christian lose their salvation? Mm-hmm. So uh, this is great. Uh, and really, when I think about this question, um, really what we're drawn back to is the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints. Mm-hmm which is essentially the, the teaching, the doctrine of... Um, once ne- saved, once, always once saved. Once saved, always saved, uh, basically saying if you have trusted in Christ alone for your salvation, mm-hmm. you're locked in. Mm-hmm. If, you're, you are, if you are secure in Christ, you are eternally you're secure. You're secure. You, you are in. You will no persevere yes. to the end, is what yes. that doctrine is, perseverance of the saints. And so when we, at, when we answer the question of can a Christian lose their, lose their salvation, the answer to that is... No, uh, and so let's let's kind of unpack that a little bit, yeah. Because, uh, but I think it's helpful. We we certainly want to kind of just just want to answer that up mm-hmm. front, and then kind of unpack um, some mm-hmm. scriptures together, uh, because this is a big question. Yes, uh, this is also I think a it's an important foundational question foundational to understand that important. whenever we are in Christ, we are we are secure. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is a, sen- a sensitive question too, because we probably have had people in our own. Uh, circles, maybe family members, friends who uh, maybe grew up in church, um, you know, did the Christian thing, mm-hmm. uh, maybe people who we thought were just strong, devout Christians, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they've, you know, deconstructed their faith, renounced their faith, and are no longer, for whatever reason, following and walking with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so I firmly understand this is a this can be a sensitive thing yeah. and, and one that we've maybe had have wrestled with. But I definitely want you all, if you're listening to this, to be um, to understand biblically as we see throughout throughout God's word is that a Christian cannot lose their salvation. Mm-hmm. And so let's we can kind of unpack that here for yeah. a moment and see what we mean by this and where we can kind of draw some encouragement and mm-hmm. assurance from. And so one of the we just have a lot of scriptures written down here. Can yeah. I do today? So uh, we're going to give you all a lot of scripture and uh, just kind of. Again, this is not going to be like an hour-long podcast. We never want these to be super long, but just keeping it concise and mm-hmm. keeping it clear is mm-hmm. what kind of our aim and, and goal is of pretty much all these podcasts. And so um, really, one one of the scriptures that, that came to mind was one that I actually referenced uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, really our first podcast when we were tackling mm-hmm. this th- these questions. One of the questions that was also submitted a few weeks ago was, how can I know that I am saved? Mm-hmm. And so this one is kind of a almost like a part two, I feel yeah. like, to that question, which is great. Um, but one of the one of the scriptures I gave in that podcast that I'm going to give again is Ephesians chapter one, uh, verses thirteen to fourteen. Mm-hmm. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the church of Ephesus, and he says he says this: In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him. You are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. And so we talked about in that podcast when we were answering the question, how can I know that I'm saved? We Really, the two things we talked about was uh, belief in Jesus mm-hmm. and is that followed up by evidence in your life yes. through fruit in your yes. life? You know, Can people see yes. Jesus in you? And so really... It, it, the foundation of it is to know you're saved is have you trust in Christ alone? Have mm-hmm. you uh, received God's grace? Mm-hmm. Uh, have you placed your faith in Jesus mm-hmm. in the atoning work of Christ on the cross and trust in the fact that he rose victoriously mm-hmm. on the third day? Uh, in that podcast, our goal was for you to understand, man, you can live with assurance knowing that you are mm-hmm. sealed yes. with the promised Holy Spirit yes. in Christ Jesus. And yes. so that's that's incredible news. 
Um, and so we see that throughout God's word that mm-hmm. you are you're sealed, you're, you're promised salvation, mm-hmm. and and so kind of a part two of that I think is is this question of man can a Christian lose it? And I think that that scripture alone are there is should be of a, a huge. It's pretty indicative, yeah. of what's to come uh, right. with this question. And um, I know there, there's there's so much to really unpack with it. And uh, I'm just kind of brought back to the concept of justification, being yeah. justified justified before Christ. Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, since we've been justified through faith in Christ Jesus, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So whenever we are in Christ, whenever we know that we are sinful creatures, that we are just completely and totally not worthy of this gift of grace that the Lord has given us, and we cast ourselves upon Him, we have made peace with God. And in that moment, whenever we have made peace with God, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, like you just said, like we see consistently throughout Scripture. Whenever we are in Christ, we have the gift of the Holy Spirit in us. Mm -hmm. And as we have the gift of the Holy Spirit in us, we will start to show these spiritual fruits, just like what's listed in Galatians 5.22. You know, you have love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. I mean, these are all incredibly important things that we see growing up out of a life that is rooted in the gospel. Mm-hmm. So whenever we are in Christ, we will share and show these fruits that there is evidence of a heart change, that there's right. evidence of God at work in us. Right. Yeah, and I think, you know, kind of bounce off of that, I mean, 2 Corinthians five seventeen, another just familiar text says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, the old has passed, mm-hmm. and the new has come. Mm-hmm. And so when you've given your life to Jesus, like you're a new creation, you're no yeah. longer that old creation. Yeah. You, you're, you're no longer, I mean, there's going to be times where we fall short, we're going to continue to fall short, but that salvation is still there. Yes. Um, you're you're still that yes. new creation in Christ. Mm-hmm. You're still have a place in eternity with God forever. Um, and so th- these are some very strong scriptures of, of helping us grasp the fact that, man, we are, we are secure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people want that security and to rest in that assurance of like, man, I, if, if I truly am a believer in Jesus, uh, that cannot be taken from me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that, that brings me to, you know, another, uh, another scripture is, uh, Romans eight thirty eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it says nothing can separate, um, uh, separate, you from the Father's love. That's paraphrase there. Um, but I can't remember the exact phrasing of the verse. Um, but nothing can separate a child from the Father's love. That's mm-hmm. that's essentially what Romans eight thirty eight says. Yeah. Um, you know, we can't be we can't be snatched away. Yeah. And I mean that that that's so comforting to know. I mean, just kind of building off of you, you see this consistently built upon in the book of Romans that Paul is teaching the church in Rome saying, Look, you whenever you are in Christ, you are secure in Christ. And knowing that whenever we are in Christ, whenever we are justified before him, whenever we are made right before him, we cannot lose our salvation. If we are truly in Christ, we will not lose our salvation. Because if we are truly in Christ, there is no going back. God is not going to undo our salvation. Whenever we are in Christ, it does not give us this license to sin because grace abounds all the more. We, we should be grieved by our sin, obviously, but this means that we have been made right before Him. Mm-hmm. And whenever the Holy Spirit is in us, we will continue to want to look more and more like the image of Jesus Christ, growing in sanctification, growing in these fruits of the Spirit consistently. Yeah, that's good. I just flipped over to, to Romans 8, uh, 38 and 39, just so I can get this, this reference right. <laughs> um, I did paraphrase there a second ago, but verse 38 says, in 39, it says, For I am sure that neither that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, Paul is, throughout Romans 8, he's talking about that assurance mm-hmm. that we can have and the salvation that we have yeah. in Jesus and yeah. just the the security that we find in Christ. And I love that. Like, we are, we are fully secure and we can live with that assurance of, of who we are in Christ that nobody can take us, mm-hmm. nobody can take away salvation yeah. from us, uh, not in the enemy. Yeah. And so that's that is so important as we think about our walk with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also comforting to know that yeah, whenever we are comforting. in Christ, like we are secure. Yeah, I mean, and that that's so just opposite, so contrary to the world saying. You know, you, you have to, to do enough good things. You have to just live this life of perfection. And 
But whenever we are in Christ, we are justified, we are made right, and we are secure in Him. Yeah. And that's just so comforting to know that Mm -hmm. we, the eternal God over all creation, who was there before everything started and who will be there after everything ends, we are secure in Him. And that just... That just brings me joy knowing this, that like, hey, I'm secure in the God of all creation. Yeah. That, that is so good and so comforting to know. Yeah. That's good. And I think when, when you think about this conversation, this, this topic, uh, can a Christian lose their salvation? Really, I think there's a couple of um, common objections uh, mm-hmm. to the belief that a Christian can't lose their salvation. Uh, and really, the two questions people will ask will be something of the nature of, well, what about what about Christians who live in a sinful, unrepentant lifestyle? Or what about Christians who reject the faith and deny Christ? Uh, did they did they lose their salvation? Mm-hmm. And uh, those are those are great questions. Yeah. Um, but really, I think the, the the problem with those kinds of questions is the assumption that everyone who calls himself a Christian has been born again. And that, that's mm-hmm. not necessarily true. Yeah, uh, which is scary. Yeah. Um, of course, we can we can kind of relate to this because we live in Montgomery, Alabama. Mm-hmm. We live in what's known as the Bible Belt. Mm-hmm. Uh, we live in a culture down south um, where there are a lot of what we call cultural Christians. Yeah. Um, and so, what I mean by that is people who have maybe grown up in church, have gone and done the vacation mm-hmm. Bible school thing went through a youth group, Yeah, uh, have done all the churchy things, have, they a, say have the right things. 20 they Bibles have on their, on their shelf, yeah. um, have a knowledge of God and, and, and know some Bible verses, but... No relationship. With no them. relationship, or they truly haven't... You can be a cultural Christian and not know Jesus as your Lord and yeah. Savior. Yeah. Um, and that's scary. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that's you if you're listening to this. I don't want to scare you into, into thinking that, but that's just the reality mm-hmm. of the culture that we yeah. live in in our context of... Um, there, there's, there is such a thing as cultural Christianity. Um, and so, uh, I mean, really, at the end of the day, the, the question that needs to be answered is, have you been born again? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what we talked about a couple weeks ago was, I mean, if you, you know, how do you know you're saved? Is, I mean, have you trusted Christ? Mm-hmm. Did, do you truly believe in him? And is that belief, uh, you know, been followed up by the evidence? Yeah. And just the work you're doing in your life um, is good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, too, like I'm, I'm reminded of, uh, you know, First John three verse six says, "No one who abides in in Him keeps on sinning," and that talks about just that unrepentant, mm-hmm. uh, habitual sin. Um, and so, and yeah, if someone is just is living in that state yeah. constantly, they're yeah. probably not saved. Yeah, you know, I mean, just just to call back to our podcast from a few weeks ago. Now, I mean, whenever we are in Christ, mm-hmm. that good old litmus test. Does our sin grieve you? Do, right. Does your sin grieve you? Does our sin grieve us? Mm-hmm. I mean, whenever we are in Christ, whenever we are consistently doing things that we know are not Christ honoring, that are not holy, that are not becoming to our witness, this this should grieve us. Yeah. And I mean, like prayerfully, I hope that we are in a position. All of us, whether you're listening to this podcast or not, are in a position that if you are in Christ, your sin should grieve you. And if you're struggling with that, if it doesn't just earnestly seek the Lord about the asking that he will give you a heart that will right. just convict you of your sin and just help you to grow in those fruits of the Spirit and grow and to be a more Christ-like image of who he is and yeah. how he is at work in your life. Yeah, that's good. And, I, and again, I know this is, a, this, is a, this is a big subject, and yeah. there are people in our lives, maybe friends who have who we thought were Christians, and they've like renounced everything. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a thing people are doing in, in today's society, and um, it's it's hard. We, I mean, we ultimately God's the one that knows the hearts. Mm-hmm. He knows he knows yeah. the souls, and he knows who's truly a believer. Um, but you know, I think in, in God's word, we definitely do see like the Bible. The Bible says that if you know people depart the faith, that is that's demonstrating they probably weren't a Christian. Yeah. Uh, and in First John two verse nineteen, it says they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might be become plain that they are all are not of us, mm-hmm. and so that's kind of wordy there. But just kind of yeah. just kind of helping phrase like, man, if there's somebody who was a part of the Christian community who has said, you know, I'm no longer part of that, like this isn't for me, mm-hmm. it's a good indicator they probably were not um, 
had not trusted in Jesus. Yeah. And I, I can I can live with peace with that and, and, and answering that que- in this question mm-hmm. that way and, and resting in and resting in that kind of answer, mm-hmm. even though it's it's tough to wrestle with and, and to think about. And but again, ultimately God's the one that knows the hearts. Um, yeah. we're called to share the message. Yeah. Um, you know, people will come to faith and we celebrate that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's this is a this is a thing we see and I think yeah. you know we can live with that assurance knowing if you've trusted in Christ, like you can't lose your salvation. Yeah. You are uh, secure in you're him. You're secure in him. Um, and those in our in our in our circles who again, going to church doesn't make you a Christian, reading your Bible doesn't make you a Christian. It's it's faith in Jesus yes. that makes you a Christian. Absolutely. Makes you a yes. follower of Jesus. And so those Christian quote unquote things don't make you a believer. And so if you mm-hmm. leave all those things, it's probably just again, it's an indicator of that mm-hmm. that person, that individual probably most likely was not a believer in the first mm-hmm. place. And so we continue praying for that person, those individuals, those groups of people, yeah. that they would come to a, uh, a place where they repent and turn to Christ alone mm-hmm. for their salvation um, in Him. And so that, that's, that's, some, that's some good news there. And I think um, just kind of one last, uh, one of my favorite passages when thinking about this, just the security we have in Jesus comes from John chapter 10. I think I referenced this too mm-hmm. uh, in, a, in a previous podcast, but John chapter 10 uh, is where Jesus is uh, teaching that he is the good shepherd, mm-hmm. uh, that he is, uh, he, he makes this declaration. It's one of the I am statements mm-hmm. where he says, I am the good shepherd. Uh, but in that passage, he says in verse 28, he's talking about us as, as his sheep, as his people, hearing his voice, and he's, he's, he's teaching about eternal life. And he says in John chapter 10, verse 28, he says, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, mm. and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Yep. Uh, my Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. That's, that's yeah. good news. Yeah. Uh, that that, is, that yeah. helps me sleep at night, resting yeah. in the security that I have in Jesus, knowing that, man, I... I've heard the Father's voice. I've, I've, I've heard him through his word. Um, I've, uh, I've given my to Jesus. Mm-hmm. I've trusted in Christ. Um, I, I can rest in the fact that, man, that nobody can mm-hmm. snatch me out of the palm yep. of my Father in heaven's hand. Man, um, that's good. We're secure. That's good. And it's comforting. Mm-hmm. It's encouraging. I live in light of that truth. I'm going to proclaim that mm-hmm. as long as I live, that, there, that I firmly believe in the yeah. doctrine of the perseverance of the saints, yeah. that we're, we're secure in that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... Yeah, it, it's a Christian, a true, a true Christian. That's really how we should phrase it. Mm-hmm. A, a true believer in Jesus cannot lose their salvation. Mm-hmm. They are secure in um, Christ. Yeah, you can't be unborn, and yeah. so <laughs> yeah, you've been born again. That's that's the question: is have yeah. you been born again? Um, have you been born again into the kingdom of God? Mm-hmm. And if you have, you're, you're locked in mm-hmm. and you're secure. And so, uh, great, great conversation yeah. here. Um, certainly one we can continue having mm-hmm. outside of the podcast, of course, but. Uh, hey, we hope this has been encouraging. Um, uh, please uh, like and, and share uh, this podcast with those around you. And we hope that you'll tune in with us again as we kind of keep diving into to more questions. All right, guys. See you next week.